every Christian is a living temple of the living God. God dwelt in the Jewish temple, took possession of it, and resided in it by that glorious cloud that was the token of his presence with that people. So Christ, by his Spirit, dwells in all true believers. The temple was devoted and consecrated to God and set apart from every common to a holy use, to the immediate service of God. So all Christians are separated from common uses and set apart for God and his service. This is a quote coming to you from Matthew Henry. In this broadcast, we are continuing our new series based on the theme, Nearer My God to Thee. In this podcast, we're going to use as our main text three scriptures. The first one is 1 Corinthians 3.16, which says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The second scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. It's a passage of verses. This is what it says. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? And then lastly, the third scripture is 2 Corinthians 6.16, which says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So we look at 1 Corinthians 3.16 and then the passage of Scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. And we notice that both begin with the same question. Know ye not. 1 Corinthians 3.16, Paul said, Know ye not. In 1 Corinthians 6.19, What? Know ye not. And this is a phrase that was used by Paul in his epistles to emphasize important truths. Like, for instance, in Romans 6, 16, he said, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. Now, that was very important that they understood that to whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey, that's who you're going to serve. And then another example would be 1 Corinthians 6, 9, where Paul said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't you know this? That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So now we look at our verses today in our study, and we see that Paul, three times in the books of Corinthians, First and Second Corinthians, he asks, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God? and you are not your own. Then Second Corinthians 6, 16, he said, For ye are the temple of the living God. So he's emphasizing, you are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the living God. Now the temple of God was the most noble type of building. But when Paul was uh, speaking of the temple of God in these verses of Scripture, he wasn't talking about the structure or the complex 
of temple. He was talking about the sanctuary, the holy place, the most holy place. It's the Greek word naos, and it means the sanctuary itself or the innermost part of the temple where God dwells. It refers to the sacred worship place itself where God's presence is manifest within the most holy place. So this is what he's referring to when he said, Ye are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the living God. You are the naos, the sanctuary, the most holy place. You are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the living God. Now in the Old Testament, when the word temple is used, it always means the material temple. Then in the Gospels, when Jesus spoke of the temple, he was referring to his body, his physical body. But the rest of the New Testament uh, is referring to uh, the, it could be referring to the church, but in this uh, these uh, verses of scripture, Paul is referring to the body of the Christian as being the temple of God because God dwells in him. God dwells by the physical symbol, the Shekinah, the glory cloud in the temple. That's where his abode was. He dwelt there among the Jews. That temple at Jerusalem was regarded as sacred. It was devoted to God's service. It was the peculiar residence of Jehovah. Well, so he dwells among Christians today. Christians are regarded as God's temple. His residence is in them. And they should regard themselves, all Christians should regard themselves as holy and consecrated to God's service. Adam Clark said, God intends to make the heart of every believer his own house. The book plugged into God's power said, God's desire is for our bodies to become the visible temples of his presence in the world. And then Matthew Henry said, we must look upon our whole selves as holy to the Lord and must use our bodies as property which belongs to him and is sacred to his use and service. Ye are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the living God. Now, Christians by profession, and they should be in reality, they are temples of the living God, the dwelling place of God, and should be dedicated to and employed for the service of God who has promised to reside in them. They are a place set apart and consecrated to God. The believer's body is the temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit wants this to get deep into your spirit today. You are a spiritual temple in which the Holy Spirit dwells. And this indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, this is the highest honor that we could have as Christians. And it obliges us to holiness and the avoiding of all communion, communion with idolaters. We are to be yielded up to, to him, to the Lord. We're to be consecrated, set apart for his use. Matthew Henry said, the temple of the Holy Ghost must be kept holy. Our bodies must be kept as his, whose they are, and fit for his use and residence. 
Now we look back at 2 Corinthians 6, 16, and we see that Paul goes on. He says, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. Now these words, I will dwell in them, are very emphatic. In fact, there are no words in our language that can equal the force of the Greek here. I will dwell in them. I will take up my indwelling in them. I will inhabit them. I will take up my constant residence with them. And the implied premise is, wherever God dwells, there is his temple. And of course, we, as we said before, that word temple indicates sanctuary, the holiest part of the temple. God dwells nowhere but in a sacred place. And when he says you are the temple of the living God and he dwells in you, he is to be at home in you to exercise his rights as proprietor of the house and to establish his rule. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. Now when the Holy Spirit comes into your spirit, he dwells with you. And when you got saved, when you were born again, the Holy Spirit came into your spirit. He is dwelling there. That means that he makes his home in your spirit. And from his dwelling, he begins to take over your soul and your body with his life. He takes over your will as you surrender your plans and purpose to his will. He takes over your intellect as you receive the mind of Christ and learn to trust his word. He takes over your emotions as the fruit of the Spirit takes over your emotional life. And he replaces anger with kindness, fear with love, arrogance with humility, insensitivity with compassion. Plugged into God's power said this, the Holy Spirit comes to establish the rule of God in our lives by coming to dwell in our spirit. He makes our spirit alive to God and thereby makes us new creatures. For the first time in our lives, we are really alive in the spirit. As new creatures in Christ, the Holy Spirit begins the lifelong process of changing us into the image of Christ. Then Paul said, For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. God said, I will be their God. I will be to them a God, not only God whom they worship, but I will be to them God who will protect and bless them. I will take them under my peculiar protection and care. But they shall have no other God. They shall have none besides me. I will be their God. I will be their God and they shall be my people. In 1 Corinthians 6, going back to that verse, 19 to 20, Paul asks, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? And then he went on to say, therefore, because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You are to glorify God in your body and your spirit. Because you are, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are to honor God, live to him, 
consecrate your body and spirit to his service. You're to yield your body and its members as instruments of righteousness to God. You're to devote and employ all you have and all you are entirely and unreservedly to his glory. How many people are doing that today? How many Christians are really doing this? Glorifying God in their body and in their spirit. God is to have your heart and your hand, your mind and your mouth, your faith and your feet. Then going back to 2 Corinthians 6.16, Paul said, You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell on them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. But that's not how he began the verse of Scripture. He began with this question. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Well, idols have nothing to do with the temple of God. There is no agreement between the temple of God and idols because idols are rivals with God for his honor. An idol is any object which comes between you and Christ. Through the Bible said this, the temple of God has no agreement with idols. Where is the temple of God? Today, the temple of God is the human body of each and every believer. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. The one in whom God dwells cannot be in agreement with idols. Then the pulpit commentary said, to a Christian, anything is an idol which usurps the place of God in the heart, whether this be a person or a system or a project or wealth or whatnot. Then Alexander McLaren said, What I prize most, what I trust most utterly, what I should be most forlorn if I lost, what is the working aim of my life and the hunger of my heart, that is my idol. So we see what agreement has the temple of God with idols? None. Ye are the temple of the living God. And knowing this, Paul said, Know ye not that you are the temple of God. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're the temple of the living God. We go to 1 John 5, 21. Knowing this, the Apostle John tells us, he commands us, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Keep yourselves from from idols, knowing that you are the temple of the living God. Keep yourselves from idols. Flee from idolatry. Allow nothing to alienate your affections from the true God. Allow nothing to estrange your hearts from God. You see, an idol is whatever takes your worship from God. It's anything or any person that comes into the heart and takes the place which ought to be filled by God and by God only. It's anything that prevents you from seeking and finding your all in God. You are to have no idols in your house, in your temple. You are the temple of the living God. There is no agreement with the temple of God and idols. 
John tells us here, he commands us, keep yourselves from idols. Our time is up for today's broadcast, but I encourage you, stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of the theme, Nearer My God to Thee. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you will walk in the truth every day of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>